Welcome to the Age to Come webcast. This is Biblical Doctrine for the Church in This Age. Uh, I'm Dave Wilson, here uh, as always with Josh Howard and Pernell Gibson, uh, a.k.a. Pernell Christosphony, which means golden voice, as we all know in the Greek. We, uh, hot, that's hot praise. Well, well, I mean, we were, we were learning about John Chrysostom yeah, in church history he's, last week. Yeah, go around. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, uh, today, uh, welcome to this episode. We are uh, calling this one the Instagram effect. And this one's kind of piggybacking off of uh, some points that we had from last week. And uh, we're going to be looking at just, uh, I, I mean, social media, I guess, somewhat more broadly, but kind of an emphasis on uh, Instagram and uh, just how we can think uh, biblically about things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, Josh, do you want to... Oh, yeah, I've got an opening question. Can you be a Christian and still be on social media? No. That is my whole That is my whole question to you and to our... Which is ironic, because we're going to be putting this on YouTube. So again, right. Which yeah, is not exactly yeah. social media. But, yeah. To prepare but for this, I've spent the entirety of the last 48 hours on Instagram. So, <laughs> I know. I really hate my body, and I'm unhappy <laughs> with all the food that I eat now. Just, Yeah. <laughs> Coveting everything. Else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything. Yeah. So exactly. let's 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 think about that. Let's let's dive into that a little bit because because typically that would be my reaction is just all social media is the devil and, and I don't like it and I'll rant against it just as long as it takes me to start feeling like a grandpa and to realize that you know successively every generation has ranted against every new technological advancement or societal you know what I mean like when kids these days um you know Sean uh, uh who I used to serve on staff with he used to always bring up when uh. When they, what was it? The typewriter, I think it was, and and the, there there was news articles from like the early 1900s just ranting against this, like they're gonna be, or, or it was computer processing and stuff was starting to come out. They, they're ranting against it because you know if people stop writing and handwriting, then you know they're gonna start worshiping Satan if they don't. Uh, wow. So anyway, everybody has you know there's there's always kind of a societal pushback against technological things. So um, so I don't want to just. I don't want to just frame it that way, but typically, what are the what are the issues though when we think about social media in particular? And this is this is not just a Christian take. This is just a you know you can read a sociologist or a psychologist or anybody that you'd like to, and most of them will agree there are certain things that come along with social media, right? Um, such as, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can think of the first one would just be hot takes. Yeah, you know, if yeah. if if we want if we want uh, to you know it's spicy, yeah, if we want mm -hmm. to reach a whole lot of people, or if we want to be you know retweeted or shared or whatever, then we just give a bunch of hot takes. I'll get mm -hmm. on there and say something like a little one sentence hot take on something that can be taken way out of context, and people can argue mm -hmm. about, and then that kind of promotes. Mm -hmm. But then it breeds, especially on Twitter, it really breeds a culture of hot takes. Yeah. Did you did either of you guys watch the Social Dilemma? I think yes. that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On, yeah. Just on social media and what were the effects. And they talked about one of the things that just kind of stood out to me was just how the algorithms right. end up being just kind of a negative spiral right. and like an ill intended things because the algorithm wants to direct you towards what people are talking about and get you involved in the conversation. But mm -hmm. the downside is just the way that those end up working is it's the really negative and, you know, de divisive posts are the things that end up getting the attention. Right. And therefore it just kind of spirals right. down. And it's not probably something that's intended to do that it's just whether it's you know human nature or just you know the state of the algorithm or whatever but it i know, think it's just kind of interesting that. yeah and the reason the reason why i say that is because um you know well i just give this anecdotal example but i've seen it enough times where i'm not so sure it's anecdotal anymore but like you know i post a lot of biblical things um when i go to my news feed for example the first thing that i'll see is someone that I don't interact with typically railing against Christianity. Mm. Like it's the first thing that pops up. And you know, once or twice I'm like, oh, maybe that's a coincidence. But then it starts to happen with like, man, I haven't talked to this person in a while, nor do they interact with my posts, mm -hmm. yet that's the first thing that I see. And it mm. was like, in some occasions, it's like, oh, this was posted two days ago. And it's the first thing that I see. And I started drawing the connection of when I learned about the algorithm the connection with the things that I post and how it's contrary. I don't know how it's written. I know it's all, you know, code, mm -hmm. but it just I, picks up on keywords yeah. or phrases or categories or something. It, yeah. and, but it doesn't seem to be like, Oh, something that Josh and a, posted. And yeah, it's like an agree. It's an agreement with what I was, you know, what mm. I said or, or in this along the it's same It's almost like it's set up to cause that clash. Some sort of division. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. We used to always we used to always joke about when we would when we would post a podcast episode to always add the phrase destroyed with facts and logic because mm -hmm. that you know like that's every YouTube video you can have you know some Christian will be out there on a street corner and they will witness to somebody but what's the video it's you know 
godless atheist destroyed by facts and logic or something yeah, or by right. click 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 clicking right. on it because uh -huh. it, it sounds controversial you know what though I, another thing too I, I think one of the things that got me thinking about that and i believe it was the social dilemma that was geared more towards politics yeah i believe yep. but uh one of the things they were saying in there was that uh if you have someone who's like a liberal they would intentionally show them like conservative type posts mm. to get them riled up and then vice versa Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. The uh, what, what's interesting about so like with the algorithms. So Elon Musk bought Twitter, mm -hmm. and one of the one of the first things that he said that he was thinking about doing, or maybe it was people were petitioning him, asking him to do this. I can't remember, but um, was to share the algorithms for Twitter because mm -hmm. everybody's curious, like mm -hmm. how do those algorithms actually work? And and of course he could share them all day, and I wouldn't know how to decipher them, but I'm sure somebody could. But, uh, you know, but anyway, just thinking about thinking about social media in general, every every Christian is familiar with certain Christian ministries. Mm -hmm. Their posts don't come, come out quite as much. You know, they're still posting, but you don't see them on your news feed mm -hmm. as much. They're not. Um, and then sometimes they're just straight. Either the post itself is is hidden or they will get put in, you know, Facebook jail or Twitter jail. Right. Um, and shadow the, banned. Or right. Something. Shadow banned or, or they'll just be, you know, straight up banned for a certain amount of time for christians it's weird to me and it was weird it was weird to me this morning as i was following a couple um a couple of christians who were very active on social media and they've got tens of thousands of followers and uh and i was just thinking to myself how, how i wonder what the game plan is to maintain that mm -hmm. um in, in a culture that is that is becoming a little bit more uh more aggressively distasteful of christian claims to absolute authority mm -hmm. How long can you really survive as a Christian on social media without drastically changing the way you are talking about God mm. and, and others? It, it was just something that that popped into my mind that it, it seems that Christians are acting as if this is a this is a constant thing that will always be there that must be maintained. Right. Like we just have to be on social media and we have to put these things out there. I was just thinking this morning, like I, I, I wonder if there is a, a point at which that will not be really an option to share your scriptural For uh, sure. biblical convictions. For sure. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, along with what you were saying, or at least to go in line with what you're saying, um, staying relevant mm. <laughs> is a big thing on, yeah. on social media. And I, and I believe it's the same mindset that causes people to compromise, uh, certain aspects of scripture. And in some cases, just the gospel as a whole in church, like yeah. if they're a preacher in order to appease the people so that they stay liked and right. keep, mm -hmm. keep, um, an audience, you know, um, I don't know if you've all seen the picture of like the uh, it's like a cartoon image, but it's a person like snorting lines of likes like Facebook likes. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah. And and I mean, I, I think it's pretty accurate because people post things. Th they need the likes like right. it feeds their ego. It, right. It and it's a dopamine something. hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and I think I think for the younger generations. So we as Christians. And I'm assuming that most of the people that would watch a, a podcast of us ranting about social media are going to be Christians. But um, when we think about that, especially with the the next generation, m my generation, which which was far ahead of both of your generations, um, by a couple months with you, Pernell, I think. Right. But uh, <laughs> or was it the reverse? Which one of us? Is, it doesn't matter. Um, when we think about the next generation, they're coming up in like they're they're growing up in the, right. the 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 arena of social media. For me, I remember when Facebook came out. I remember when Facebook you had to have the edu address, mm -hmm. like it had to be a yeah. student account. Yep. Um, and so it was like oh, a big yeah. deal when you didn't have to have those student mm -hmm. accounts anymore. There's more people it's like, on there. Oh, there's old people on right. Facebook now. So yeah. like as 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 old as <laughs> that sounds, we are those old people. <laughs> we are those old people. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years later. But but I you know we can remember back to when there was not Facebook. Like I mm -hmm. clearly remember when it came out. Zanga. Zanga? Zanga. You guys don't remember Zanga? No. That was like, that was my good, getting my feet wet in oh, social man. media. That was like a blog. It was like, uh, it was pre MySpace uh, with Zanga. Oh, it was wow. just like, yeah, it was like the predecessor to that. See, I remember High Five. And it was just, I yeah. I remember High Five. High Five? <laughs> yeah. No. It was, yeah, it was. Everyone has, everyone yeah. under 30 has turned off this video <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Go around, yeah. Grandpa. Um, <laughs> No, but I mean, just as far as the next generation, they're they're growing up in that environment. So like, so so the way we think of likes, we may be kind kind of cognizant of the fact that I don't want to be dependent on likes. Like we can kind of understand that. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be ingrained in those next generations mm -hmm. to a point that it's just not for us. Um, whereas they really have, and again, this is not just a Christian perspective. This has been this has been a secular perspective as well. There is a um, a, a dependence 
right. the need for for that affirmation, that positive affirmation. Definitely. Um, as a Christian, though, and I, I would point us to to one one passage. Um, as a Christian, I think that that brings up some trouble. You know, where where is this a Christian issue? Where is this a discipleship issue? Um, Paul in Philippians four in that in that passage that's got one of the most misquoted uh, Bible verses in all of Scripture, um, verse thirteen, he says, "I can do all things through Him who strengthens me," which is you know, plastered on every football and basketball uh, T-shirt, oh, yeah. and you know, in any sports paraphernalia, this is this is the one that you quote. Um, obviously, in context, starting back in verse eleven, Paul says, "Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content." And and remember, Paul had a lot of bad situations that mm-hmm. he was in. He said, "I'm content in all of these." Verse twelve: I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And then he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Mm. Um, The reliance on God and contentment in where he has us, I think, is something that becomes an immediate discipleship issue Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when it concerns social media. Mm -hmm. If we're we're living in a day and age where social media is widespread, almost everyone is on social media to some extent, they're they're living for the likes, or at least they're dependent on the likes, Mm -hmm. whether they recognize that and are cognizant of that or not. And then we as Christians are called to be content if we are unknown and unliked and poor and brought low. Or the, or the reverse, but in any circumstance, whether you have 20,000 followers or whether your family follows you and really nobody else, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. Where your contentment is not on that, but in God. Mm, amen. That yeah. becomes a huge Christian discipleship issue. For sure. Um, which, is, which is one of the many reasons that I think that we as Christians should be thinking about social mm-hmm. media doctrinally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point because that, I mean, that principle, I think, can apply to anything. Like, that's not something that's just intrinsic to social media. Right. We just kind of see that as one as one outworking. And I, and I think for that reason, I mean, social media, like a lot of other things, is it's a tool that can mm-hmm. that can be used for, for good or evil and, yeah. um, and things like that. But yeah, that is, that is, that is a really good point. It, it's a tool, but, and, and I'll pick on Twitter just because I don't understand Twitter. <laughs> I have an account. I think I've posted one thing in, you know, like the five years that I've had it or something like that. But, um, but, but certain, certain social media platforms like Twitter were built around very short Mm -hmm. statements. And the whole nature of Twitter is that if you want those statements to travel, which obviously you do, you're on Twitter, then you make those statements very, uh, you know, bombastic or, Mm -hmm. you know, very, so like the whole nature of Twitter, it's a, it's a tool and it can be used for good. I agree. But I think there's some designs of that yeah. tool that make yep. it very problematic oh, if yeah. you're misaiming that tool. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I saw that was talking about just like the increasing like brevity of the American mind when it oh, comes yeah. to our processing of things. About how you know hundreds of years ago people would read you know hundreds and hundreds of pages of novels and things like that, and eventually that turns into Reader's Digest when you're reading you know, maybe a 20 or 30 page article on something. And then, you know, that goes less and less into blogs where you're doing 2000 words or less, you know, goes into Facebook where you're doing, I don't know what the 500 words or less. I don't know. And then, you know, down to Twitter where it's what, 164 characters, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, less and less and (laughs) less. And that's just kind of how our, our mentality shifting. And I, I don't think that we're better for that. No, no. I mean, that, that even affects, you know, conversations like just, talking to people about the lord uh, like other christians even like you're having an in-depth conversation with them and you're sharing like you know really scripturally like rich stuff and you I, it, now it could be the way that a person presents it um also but you can see like after like so many sentences they just start to like they right, like they can't right, take right. it mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's not like I don't know, like electric enough. I'm like, I don't right. know. You know, it's it's too slow. And it's the you know, it's the TLDR. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, too long mindset. Didn't read. Too long didn't read it. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and I've got to admit, Facebook started doing this thing where if you share an article without clicking on it, it'll alert you. Or at least it did to me this one time. It was and it was a it was a silly article. It was a Babylon B article, so it's okay. satire. But I just saw the title. I thought that's a funny concept. I wasn't gonna read the article, but I was like, that's a funny concept. And I was gonna forward it to somebody, and it popped up, and it was like you've not read the article or whatever. Are you sure you want to go ahead? And it oh, kind of I've convicted me a little bit. If I can, if I can say Facebook convicted me a little bit, but I was like, <laughs> Ooh, I do. But I do that sometimes with real things, yeah. right? You'll see a news headline or something. And, and right. we're so programmed with that, you know, 240 character mindset that we just see the news article and we're like, Oh, okay. I understand the, as, and, a, as opposed to the yeah. Christian call where if, if we can just kind of flip that over and think about scripture, one of the things that we've long 
bemoaned as Christians is that people do that with scripture. You'll have the one verse, you know, God is love. Pick any social dynamic that's going on and I'll just say, well, God is love. Therefore, you should agree with me on, again, fill in the blank, any 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 social political category. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's that same mindset of we grab something out of scripture, rip it out of its context, kind of like Philippians 4.13. Mm -hmm. um, we rip it out of its context and we throw it out there and people accept it and hear it because they're so used to that with every other aspect of For their sure. life with social media. Definitely. So again, it's not, it's not that social media is a bad thing, but it's, I was trying to think of a good illustration and the, the best one I could think of on the spot was like, like a sledgehammer with a really short handle. You know what I mean? Like you can still do good with that hammer. Yeah. It's a, it's usable, but man, that's dangerous. Watch yeah. your knees. You know what I mean? Yeah, like no, there's some, sure. That's a terrible illustration. I'm, I'm sticking with it, though. Well, Short-handed no, sledgehammer. Well, I can, I can just in in terms of engaging with people, it can be effective. Mm -hmm. But For sure. it's not, I've learned over many years, it's not the best way to engage with people. Now, in some cases, Or at least like fine. the soul way, right? Right. Like there's, the some more, there's something more needed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, I've gotten to the point it's now. It's a where supplemental prepared. tool, not a replacement. There you yeah, go. Definitely. There you go. Yeah, I, I, like I'd much rather, you know, do it face to face uh -huh. or even um, sh even the phone is better. <laughs> you yeah. know, you can hear the person's voice and whatnot. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So to answer the question, I don't know if it was like fully answered. I think that you can be a Christian and still be on social media. OK, you just have to really be mindful <laughs> because yeah. the like some of the things that, that um, I'm sure we're going to talk about, like I think it's easy for anybody to fall into it. Um, like one of the things uh, is uh, people are meaner. People on are Facebook, way meaner. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, on Facebook and uh, Twitter. I mean, YouTube even. Yeah, yeah, even YouTube. Yeah, yeah. like um, there's a there's a term for it. Uh, let me see. There was a psychologist. Uh, well, these psychologists uh, talk about this particular term, but it's called online disinhibition effect. And this is when a person is on when a person who is online acts out more frequently. Uh, or more intensely hmm. than they do in person. So, as a, as a pastor, mm -hmm. several times I've I've seen where somebody has posted something online, um, full of you know caps lock and exclamation points, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, so they're ready to murder somebody on mm -hmm. this thread, and then you will call them right out of concern, and they immediately soften and their voice yes. is sweet, and they're oh, I didn't mean that. Now, of course, I'll take that down and or edit it or you know yeah. oh. I'm going to get together with them and I love them so much and everything changes, yeah. mm -hmm. but online it was, it was completely different yeah. and it, it does lead you toward like, that's a danger of online activities. Mm -hmm. it, it breeds a different mindset. Yeah, definitely. So mm -hmm. like uh, one particular uh, psychologist had mentioned that, uh, how did he put it? He said that, uh, so this particular um, uh, fray or term online disinhibition, uh, disinhibition effect, he says it is a shift uh, to a constellation within self-structure involving clusters of effect and cognition that differ from the in-person constellation. Mm. So just putting that in more laming terms, like if when, I, when I'm talking to you, if we're having a debate or something like that, and it's a heated debate, say we just completely disagree on, mm. you know, a particular thing. There's something different if I can look into your eyes right. and see you as like, you know, a human being and an image bearer of God, right. you know, and like I'm going to choose my words differently because I can see even though I might express, oh, I disagree for these reasons. I can see how my words are affecting you live, right? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, well, I'm just going to, you know, it's just all in here and you, there's no connection. Right. Um, and it could be really dangerous because even Christians can fall into that. Sure. I fell into that when yeah. I was younger. You know, let me let me terrible. push back against what you said a second ago yep. when you said that Christians could be on social media. Okay, and I'm going to take the negative in this debate um, <laughs> because again, this topic has been obviously like we're not the this isn't the first discussion about Christians and social media. Uh -huh. um, Christians in general, I think, have been struggling with social media since it came out and, and weighing those factors and thinking about whether or not it's a good thing. Here's what I would suggest, though, to most Christians. Um, we would we would always recommend radical amputation when it comes to sin in our lives, right? right? So like if if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Not literally, of course, but like if if going to a certain area of town causes you to sin, avoid that area of town. Mm -hmm. If if a certain pastime causes you to sin, stop that pastime and, mm -hmm. and do something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we we're, we're serious about sin in our lives. I think for most Christians, if if we were to tell them in any sort of counseling situation, like, hey, I think you should probably just get off social media. I think most Christians would think that was nonsense. Even if they might just smile to your face, they would think that was nonsensical. 
I would suggest this. I think for some Christians, sometimes we should get off social media. Absolutely. If not permanently, at least for a time. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and one of the many reasons why is Christians are, are commanded by the God of the universe to be slow to speak and slow to anger. Mm -hmm. And and you cannot tell me for a second that all social media platforms, except maybe Instagram, but like at least like Twitter <laughs> or Facebook or any of those, those all encourage quick responses. Yeah. If you don't respond within the day, like you're some boomer who's you know clearly lost it, like you, no, you got to respond within the minute, right? And you got to have a hot take about it. Mm -hmm. It encourages that, and that doesn't mean that it's necessarily sinful, but I think for a lot of Christians that that will be a stumbling block that they should contend with in their lives. Absolutely, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't I, think though that that's exactly I don't think that's the way that most Christians would look at it. I think if we were to come into church and suggest that people radically excise social media from their lives if it's leading them into sin. I don't think you'd see one person pop off of social media that day. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because as, and, and Purnell, 15 years ago, I think I would fall into the camp that you're saying, I would be like, oh, it's just social media. It's not that big of a deal. Right. But like, you know, in my 38 year old brain now and the experiences that I've had on social media, it can totally be an idol. Mm, <laughs> like that, that 100%. Too, yeah. And the inability to get off of it like that, it, it's just, again, like I say, I would use Facebook as an example, or Instagram, like, it's just Facebook and it's Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. like, what is it about that that you need? Like, are you that nosy? Like, do right. you, is, is it really just about the connections with people? Because I, I would imagine that you would have those people's phone number. You could just connect with those people that way. Right. There, there's something more to it. Um, and it's hard to even put my finger on exactly what it is, but I there's think something more to it. Too speaking of you know talking 15 years ago, mm -hmm. things were a lot less immersive back then. Yes. If you think to even the early days of Facebook, or I mean any of the the pre platforms, you know MySpace or something mm -hmm. like that, it's like okay, you're just gonna get on it when like you're home in the evening on your computer, and you're gonna get on there, you know, like checking emails or yeah, something right. like it's just part of a routine thing. Right. Right. Whereas now through phones and all the different platforms that we have. It's like people are just constantly on it, constantly accessible, and then that becomes kind of the expectation right. is that you are immediately accessible. So that was, uh, yeah. for me, I do, I've, um, I mean, Facebook is really the only one that I regularly use as far as social media goes. Um, I actually deleted it off my phone back in, I think it was back before the 2020 elections. Oh, okay. Like shortly before that. Like, <laughs> I think I did People well. were just so exactly volatile and stuff like that, and I was like, okay, yep. I don't, I don't want to be disconnected from all this. Like, I still want this to be a thing but i don't want this to be like something where i'm always like oh did that person respond yeah like yeah. you know if i'm just arguing with people about stuff or you know whatever like it's just um like for me i guess wake up call yeah part, part of my conviction was just like <laughs> yeah like realizing you know like i'd be at home in the evening after work and like my kids would want to hang out with me and i'm like yelling at someone on facebook or something <laughs> right? I'd be like okay this is not <laughs> It's not helpful. You know, there's yeah, there, there's a time and a place when that's okay, uh -huh. but it's so, not when I'm it's supposed to be at home with my family definitely. and uh, and all that. So that was my yeah. One, one of the biggest good. problems with that type of thing that I found, um, and Josh, you you pretty much touched on it is, you know, someone will um, they'll just be really vicious in the comment section mm -hmm. of something that you might post, and you will message them privately, and the the demeanor changes. They still disagree but they're not vicious any longer. Mm. And I began to wonder, is it because like there's an audience? <laughs> you know, like why, why, why is there such a difference? And then that was one of the things that got me thinking like, man, I think I just rather talk to people one-on-one, -on -one. Yeah. you know, and, and which also caused me to post less. Um, like I, I got to the point where I wouldn't even post unless I was ready to just go at it with people, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it could take up a large part of your day and you know, you fall into that terrible mindset of like when someone comments and then you're like, oh, I got to handle this. And you have to comment. Yeah. You, you can't yes. let it just sit out there unanswered. That's, that used to drive yes. me nuts. Yep. I'd be like, it's just sitting there. Yes. Right. I, I can't respond. not right. answer right. this. Yeah. Hold, on, hold on, kids. Like you said, hold on, kids. <laughs> Daddy will be important. there in a minute. Yeah. You know, when, somebody's wrong on the internet. Right. Somebody's wrong. Somebody's wrong. That, that should be the title. Somebody's I've written down like three titles for this episode. No, one, one of the things, one of the things too, I think with that is, so scripture says, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. If, if you're a Christian and when we're face to face, you're acting godly, yep. but then you are acting ungodly on online. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It does mean that you're wearing two different faces. You're what yes. James would mm. refer to as the double-minded man yes. or woman. 
it means that you are entertaining evil in your heart. Definitely. And it's coming out. Yeah. You may not look at it that way. You may be like, oh, no, I'm just kind of venting. I'm a little bit more real online. Right. No, you're sinning, and it's coming out of your mouth, Absolutely. and you're entertaining that in your heart. That's what worries me as a Christian is mm-hmm. when you see mm-hmm. those things coming from Christians online, that means we're allowing sin to dwell in our hearts, and it's showing yes. by our online behavior. Yeah. That becomes a discipleship issue. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, definitely. I think it's just worth worth noting. You know, um, oh goodness gracious, there's, uh, and that was that was great. Like another way, I mean, just falling right in line with you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Um, it's not even necessarily them, at least when it comes to various forms of social media, uh, referring to like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. A person doesn't even necessarily have to type anything personally to know. <laughs> for you to know what's in their heart. It's mm-hmm. a reshare. It's a like yeah. of someone else's comment. It's a reshare of some, you know, meme, you know, depending on what, what it is. Um, you know, like a person, you know, you could have a friend who, and this is an unfortunate situation. I've had this type of situation before. Like they know I'm a Christian and like, oh yeah, we're friends, you know, you know, I like you and all this other stuff. And it's fine that you're a Christian. And then someone else will say something like, yeah, I think all Christians should be driven to the street and shot and then they'll like it. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's like, Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I was just sitting next to you. Right. And you feel that way? Yeah, you know I'm a Christian, right? Right. You know, it's it's concerning. It's really concerning. And, and not to say that we would, well, we wouldn't expect something like that by default. But, like, the person who might like a comment like that isn't necessarily a Christian. But it's, again, just knowing what's in a person's heart and how it just comes out in just a simple right. like mm-hmm. of someone else's thing. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to do. I was actually cracking up thinking about, a, I guess, a real-life example of kind of when that happened to me a couple weeks ago. I was talking to one of my buddies, and we've been good friends for a long time, and he just we were talking about, I think, somebody online, and he was oh, I don't like that guy. It's like, oh, why not? It's like, I just I don't like people who try to make things biblical. And I'm just like, y- you know we're friends, right? Like, we're... Like, I'm, I'm your boy, yeah? Like, uh... Oh my goodness! Let me let me give one more one more aspect of this because because that that's that was all that was all really good and helpful. But also to to me, so as Christians, everyone, every human, not just Christians, every human struggles with envy or jealousy or um, you know wanting what others have or or maybe feeling that what we have is not enough based on what others have. That whole comparative jealousy and envy dynamic now as christians we understand that we're, we're we're not supposed to be envious people right um first timothy chapter six speaks on this uh paul says that godliness with contentment is great gain with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world we cannot take anything out of the world but if we have food and clothing with these we can be content mm. um, in other words just be content with what god gives he provides for his children and, and that's enough for us mm-hmm. whether he makes you to rise high in this world or whether he brings you low in this world we're content in every circumstance um as, as opposed to social media where again nobody's going to be posting their bad day on social well actually some people might post their bad day on social media but by and large it's like the good th- good things in mm-hmm. life look what i have so if you're scrolling through social media and let's just say you struggle with you know you brought up weight at the beginning or i said something about body image um if let's say that you are uh struggling with things about body image, maybe maybe either not feeling good about yours or just overly comparing yourself to others, mm-hmm. and you're scrolling through social media, you're going to see person after person after person. Yeah. So as opposed to, it's it's just, it's it heightens it. Yeah. So as opposed to, I'm around a couple friends, and I may ha- struggle with those feelings and have to remind myself of contentment in the Lord, now all of a sudden I'm confronted with hundreds or thousands right, right. of displaying their yep. best yeah. online. And keep going with that. You're in a job that you really aren't thankful for. You're struggling with contentment in your job. You don't see how this is a blessing from God. It feels like a like a drudgery. And then you're online, hundreds and thousands of people. Yeah. I got a promotion. I'm doing I'm getting to fly to this great location and do this great and you're flipping through and struggling with those images. Yeah, it's, I just visualize someone like standing on the beach like this is my dream job and they have their laptop and you're just like (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think that's really good and and i think that really kind of ties in with i guess the theme of this episode being kind of on instagram and obviously that wasn't our our goal necessarily to talk exclusively about instagram but i think that that is really a good example i heard someone say it that like tiktok is about your face and instagram is about your body where like Mm. that's the thing that it, it predominantly goes and like to be honest like 
I don't fully get either TikTok or Instagram. Yeah. Like to me, like when I first started getting on Instagram, I was like, oh, like let's see what this is about. It was supposed to be, you know, the next the next big thing. And I was like, this is just like uh Facebook, but without the parts that I like about yeah. Facebook. Like it was just, you know, just about pictures. But I think um so one one thing that I think is important to bring up. So I, I was reminded of a couple years ago, we did a uh, we did a life group here that was on God's design and creating uh, humanity and specifically in the distinctions between God creating us male and female. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we talked about were the hurdles or the proclivities that men tend to have and those that women tend to have. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about with men how really most common sins to men can either fit in the bucket of um, selfish aggression or selfish passivity. Mm -hmm. And it's like pretty much any sin that a dude commits is going to fall into one of those buckets. Either you're trying to be domineering and controlling of things you shouldn't be, mm -hmm. or you're being passive and you're punting on responsibilities that God has given you. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, those are the two buckets. And then uh, we talked about how with women, more often than not, their two sort of buckets that their sin falls into is um, uh, like a sinful comparison or sinful perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at Instagram specifically, it's almost like, man, like what is Instagram all about? Like it's about like body comparison right. and just perfection, just having the perfect whatever. And, you know, and it doesn't have to be all physical. Like it can be the perfect family or, you know, job or food or, yeah. you yeah. know, whatever. But um, it's just like, man, like I can just see how something like that could be such a vice to so many. I mean, not to say that obviously that dudes you know, can't fit into those as well, but just, right. it almost seems like a designed, like, snare for women, almost. You know, I, like, I have an Instagram account, and, uh, goodness gracious, like, I don't use it, probably because, again, like you said, like, I prefer to, like, I like pictures, but I like typing things out. Same here. Like, that, yeah. <laughs> that type right. of thing. I would rather have a conversation with yeah. someone than look at a picture of something. One of the things that caused me to stay away from Instagram as much is because I, I would have friends in the past, uh, some of them, like, either in relationships or married, and then they would find themselves in peculiar situations where they were liking pictures that they shouldn't. Mm. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, I'm like... And then once I realized that that type of, and again, I think it depends too. I don't understand Instagram enough. Uh, I would imagine it has to do with who you follow. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, you know? exactly. Yep. Um, yep. But that just seems like that could just cause unnecessary drama mm -hmm. right. altogether. Um, it just makes more sense to kind of stay away from that. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and in relation to the, to the, the married couples on Instagram, um, I, I have found it, and, and I'm giving away a pastoral secret, I think, in this, but uh, if I see <laughs> if I, if I see somebody starting to post on any social media um, a whole lot about their spouse and how great their spouse is, I'm usually going to reach out to them that week and see if their marriage is falling apart. Mm. And I'm, I'm being dead serious. Because mm. um, it has happened so many times that you will see, like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, man, he's he has been posting about his wife a lot lately and like, yeah. look how in love we are and look how perfect she is. And I just, and it's like, well, that's really cool. And then they're separated and you're always wondering like, what's, what's going on there. Um, and you can tell what's going on. Obviously it's, you're projecting a picture of what you want reality to be, but right. it's not reality. Hmm. And everybody knows that about social media. It has yeah. the propensity to give a false reflection of reality just by its nature. Mm. Um, but I think for Christians that, that can become a deadly snare for us right. yeah. when we're trying to convince others of this is what this is. And, and in reality, it's unraveling at its core. Wow. Yeah. Um, it Good. I've, I was gonna say, I've noticed a, a similar type of thing, um, and I kind of developed the theory, and it seems to be right a lot of the times. With, like if if you know a married couple, um, and you don't necessarily know what's going on in the marriage, but then you start to notice that one of them is one or both might start to take more selfies. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's not just like a normal selfie. It's like. Like, oh, you're dressed up for this selfie. And then right. you're, oh, there's cleavage. Like, what? Yeah. Like, and, in the, in the, and the angle's always and here. The, the <laughs> angle's always, always there. And like, then you get the, straight the up to the lips sky. Lips. Yeah. You know, you get the duck lips, and I'm like, okay, I don't, I think something's going on. Right. <laughs> something's not mm. good, you know. Have mm. you ever noticed that type of thing oh, before? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, too, to, earlier you said, did you read from James earlier? You talk about men it. being okay yeah. about being double minded double and things minded. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that that just kind of kind of reminds me of you know Josh mentioned about how just 
like social media isn't really reality and i think that's another one of the the downsides of just the proclivities is it's almost like and i think this may be started more with like myspace or something where the idea is to you know create you know this all about you kind of thing and i think it's just we we're we all naturally want to hide from our flaws and we want to you know turn our face the right way for the good side and not the you know (laughs) jacked up side of your face or whatever (laughs) but but it's just it's easy to try to create like a mask or a veneer of just this is who i want to be this is who i want to portray myself Mm as um and that just that is a form of of Mm double-mindedness um it's just i i think a lot of the social media really just kind of rewards that that double-mindedness i I think is is where part of the problem is and it, it it doesn't make it easier you know thinking christianly thinking thinking with biblical standards as a worldview as the lenses through which we see everything Uh, we're already in a you know postmodern culture however you want to frame that we're in this culture that has kind of a uh, kind of a hermeneutic of suspicion toward everything like we're we're trained naturally somebody calls me on, on the phone and says hey i've got a great deal for you i'm immediately like this is a scam i hang, a I hang hermeneutic out. of um, suspicion yeah that's what we should call the it's, episode <laughs> yeah careful with that because some some scholars have gone a different way with with that one but um that's not that's not what i'm referring yep, to no, I'm, i know I'm, what you mean yeah I, but, but you know what i mean you get a you get an email that says you won something you delete it and probably you know block the sender right. like we we are naturally predisposed to knowing that most of the things out there are not true um social media likewise we're we're having to teach our kids that yes you're seeing those things but remember what you're seeing on there is not true and that's not reflecting reality it raises i'm afraid and this is just me speculating i'm afraid it is going to raise a generation um that knows it's not true but doesn't care Mm, in other words all that matters is the projection yeah um Mm -hmm. and and i see that because it plays out in the news we hear news reports and we hear social dynamics happening and everyone literally everyone knows it's not true yeah Mm -hmm. but we smile and we go along with it right and that that that's a very frightening dynamic And, and that's one of the reasons i think social media is very popular right now is because by and large with everything we're trying to think that now you bring that thinking into our our lives before God, Coram Deo, that's dangerous yeah. that our kids might walk into church and think or just experience and say, oh, of course they're all hypocrites. They're putting on that face. Yes, he's going to read things from the pulpit that aren't going to actually, like, none of it is actual. Right. Um, it's just the projection. You know, it, oh my gosh. Um, that makes me think of, and I, I think this exists in more than just Snapchat, but I first saw it in Snapchat, the filters. Yeah. Where you can oh, yeah, make yeah. Your, it, it, matter of fact, I think I even have that function within my camera on my phone mm. where you can make your eyes a little bit bigger. Yeah. Or your like your jawline a little bit more, yeah. you know, chisel oh, yeah. and all this stuff. And you see people, at least I see people, um <laughs> taking pictures of themselves, which is fine, you know, in some regards, but they always have a filter on. Right. Always. And so it it can cause you to basically what I'm what I'm thinking is like oh I'm really not happy with the way that I like the way that I actually look the way God mm-hmm. made me right. I need to make this alteration and that's another thing that's like really dangerous and I I would have never thought like when like when I first saw the filters I was like oh, look at this funny thing oh, I have a like sure. dog ears yeah and like oh I have bigger eyes well do you remember now, when the hashtag no filter started popping up everywhere oh yeah I do remember that. I, I remember and I had yeah. to look it up. Again, I'm, yeah. I'm old, but like I had to look it up and I was like, what's hashtag no filter? It, it, it was so dominant to the point where if you took one without a filter, that was noteworthy. Right. Um, yeah. And, and you know what yeah, I mean? You yeah. apply, you apply yeah. that then to our spiritual thinking, which our spiritual thinking is not separate. It's not like we're, our church life is over here and everything right. else is over there. But still, like you apply that to the way we spiritually think of the world. Um, I think one of the one of the great dangers to Christianity are those who claim to be Christian for every reason other than the fact that they're following Christ. Right. Those who occupy church pews for any other reason than the fact that they are bought by Christ and servants to him for, for everything. I mean, those who just put on the veneer of Christianity uh, for whatever reason and yet deny it with their hearts and their actions. Right. The, I, I, I see those two connected mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot of... Like you said, a lot of facade. I remember, yeah. uh, I don't know if you guys saw, the. there was a video of like, it started out as like a picture of like a really pretty girl in like a bikini or something. And then it was in real time to see how it was photoshopped. And the original photo was a pizza that someone just, <laughs> oh my word, you know, moved around. But it was like, you know, that that's 
where Wait. that's where we are with technology oh was, my that, was word. it a joke or was it really a pizza that someone like no it was an actual yeah something. like it was a picture of a pizza that someone just manipulated and moved everything around oh, to where word. you know like looking at it you yeah. would not know that that's crazy wow. yeah it's, but i mean that's just you know that's an yeah. example of just the, sure. the layer of of fake that that can exist on uh on so, a lot of social media i think i think you know going back to my my spectacular illustration about the shorthanded sledge short handled sledgehammer um <laughs> When we think about that, so everything in social media is about it's subjective. Number one, because it's my opinion that matters. Um, it's it's not twistable, but it's modifiable. What's what's the word I'm pliable. looking for here? I guess pliable. Maybe we we manipulate it mm-hmm. in order to look the way we want it to, and then we present that to others. Mm-hmm. Um, everything about that process is antithetical to what we call people to as Christians. Right. Where, whereas, whereas Christians, we understand that there's a God who has spoken. We, we bow before him. We bend ourselves to his will. Yeah. And then we proclaim his truth to others, not, not our own yeah. perspective. We're conformed to his image. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Everything about that, that cycle is just kind of reversed in right. that, which again, is not to say that social media is inherently bad, but those processes, which seem to be encouraged by social media, oftentimes, um, those are bad. Yeah, and those definitely. those would be damaging. Yeah. Um, one one other passage I wanted to make sure to reference was Philippians chapter four, uh, verse seven through eight. Uh, Paul in Philippians said this, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I would just point out, Christianity is not just something you keep in your heart of hearts. Christianity is something that dominates the heart and the mind. Uh, verse eight, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Mm. If we were to apply that, then just, just that passage, Mm -hmm. um, to our social media interactions, I think that it would, um, it would wash a lot of Christian posts, uh, from, from the internet. It also cause you to maybe, uh, unfriend and hide a lot of right a lot of people too right you know um, Mm -hmm. yeah yeah if if we're pressing if we're pressing christ into all of life christ is the lord of all of life we're pressing him into all of those things social media doesn't get a pass right i I think that would be my conclusion can can a christian uh be on social media yes i'm on social media um but but god forbid that i allow that to be some corner of the the world that i don't think uh, christ has the the authority over you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah yeah, I think it's, uh, I would say, almost to kind of conclude my thoughts, it's almost like a, um, it's a, it's a Christian liberty issue, but I think it's a Christian liberty issue and a wisdom issue, and I would almost liken it to, like, alcohol or something like that. Like, okay, can a Christian drink? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we can, but it's something that we need to be aware of that is something that easily, like, there can be pitfalls there. Right. Um, it can lead us into ungodliness. Right. Um, and I think that's just something to be aware of, something that we need to be in the word about, something that we need to be in prayer about, something that we need to be introspective. Mm-hmm. Intros- Did I say that yeah, right? Yeah. Introspective. Yeah. About, you know, just knowing ourselves and knowing, okay, well, I struggle with you know, these things, wow. therefore, you know, again, that's just, it's a wisdom issue. Yeah, no, you're right. Sure. I mean, just because it's the same uh, thing, like you had mentioned, like alcohol, for example, and, and so, like some people shouldn't drink, some people shouldn't be on any type of social media. Yeah. They, they just really shouldn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and you, you can figure out if you're one of those people relatively quickly, I think, mm-hmm. you know, if you're honest with yourself. <laughs> or yeah. shoot us an email and we'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the age to come webcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> No, that's it. I think it's good. And, and, and for the Christian, again, just like with every other area of life, this isn't something where um, when you hear this, when you hear like we should press Christ into all of life, that's not saying like you can't have fun like everybody else does mm-hmm. on the Internet. Because um, Christians tend to do that with any given area of our sanctification. We tend to think, oh, that's just trying to, you're probably trying to put a big wet blanket on something that's just good. Um, you know, w- w- think, you know, what movies you watch, what groups you hang out with, what venues you attend. Yeah. We, we can we can have that thinking with any of those. And I would just recognize, as with all of those, so, so with social media, this is how you flourish. Like, if you want to rot as the world rots naturally in their own sinful desires then by all means don't press christ into all of life um but if you want Mm. to flourish and actually live in that joy of christ push him confidently into this area and let let him guide what you do and what you say and what you think so 
Amen. Okay. I think that yeah, wraps that's it up. That's a good conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, at, at, did I read the email address? I think I did. But yeah, if, if you have uh, thoughts or questions or arguments, um, shoot us an email, the age to come webcast at gmail.com. Yep. Um, love to hear from you. Uh, we don't have a social media page for our webcast. No, we don't. Which, uh, we'll let me do adjust that. my collar and just <laughs> pat myself on the back. No. That's not by design, but <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to say, and also too, you know, if you have some suggestions of topics you'd for like sure. us to cover, get our thoughts on, pick our brains on, um, shoot that to us in the email. We'd Absolutely. love to, uh, love to do that. Um, but, uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching and, uh, we will see you a couple in a couple weeks. Grace and peace. <laughs>